Hey fellas, me Trapper here, and today I've got a great review for you. What I'm going to talk about is the Knives of Alaska Brown Bear Cleaver combo. Now, these knives were given to me by a very good friend. Um, we'll call him Ace. Ace, you know who you are, and uh, I'm grateful. I really am. These are, these are absolutely beautiful knives. Thank you very much. I look forward to using these for many, many years. Now, this is the Knives of Alaska Brown Bear Cleaver with the stag handle. This is um, D2 steel, and the stock is quarter inch thick. And it is sharpened from here all the way around. You've got a thumb hole, and this allows you to really choke up on this cleaver. The other knife is the Knives of Alaska Cub Bear. This has also got the stag handle. Now, you've seen me use um, the other model of this knife for years in my, in my videos. I'm a huge fan of the Cub Bear uh, knife. They call this a caping knife, but for me it's a skinning knife. The one that I've had for years was made of 440C. This one is made of D2 uh, steel, just like the cleaver. Uh, so I'm really interested in comparing the D2 to the 440C, especially over time. So what I'm going to do is two things. I'm going to use this cleaver for some basic chopping and cutting of wood, and then I'm going to use it to skin a beaver, just like I always do, in conjunction with the cub bear. And what I want to test, what my objective in testing this is, is a lot of times you see guys carrying a, a large survival knife. And I've heard the claim that a big knife can do everything that a little knife can, but a little knife can't do all the things that a big knife can. That makes sense to me. Um, however, there's a lot of times if I'm butchering in the field that I need to do some chopping. For instance, I may need to chop tails off. I, need, I may need to chop feet off. I may need to split bones. Uh, I'm big into bone broth, so when I'm butchering something, uh, rather than taking a, a whole femur off of an animal, if I can split that uh, in two or three places to let the marrow get out a little bit better, the cleaver really comes in handy. And when you're out in the woods like this, if instead of carrying a bushcraft knife and a skinning set, if you have one tool that can do chopping uh, and splitting of light wood and skinning, to me that's a great plus. But I'm going to put it through its paces and let's just take a look and see how it works out. All right, let's take a look at um, maybe cutting some poles or tent pegs. Well, I could stay out here all day and whittle sticks and split wood. Um, this knife, it's not, it's not a problem. I mean, it'll, it'll do whatever you need it to do in that regard. After all, it's a quarter inch thick piece of D2 tool steel. Um, I don't think saplings are gonna give it any trouble. So any type of task that you need, general camp chores, uh, cutting pegs, cutting poles, sap, saplings, uh, putting points on things, uh, chopping anything, thick rope, whatever you need, um, this will handle it, trust me. And looking at the edge after um, putting it through its paces, there's no, no rolling, deforming, no edge damage that I can see with my naked eye. Um, and it's still, it's still plenty sharp, trust me. So let's w see what it does um, on meat, after all. That's what we're here for.
It's like butter. It's like cutting butter. Look at that. The problem that I'm having is that this knife is so sharp that when I lift up it's cutting through the skin and it's it's not allowing me to go forward because as soon as I pull up it cuts cuts right through the skin you see I mean it's just see I can't that's how sharp and how well this knife slices I mean it's uh see if I can get it going here you can see how I'm gonna choke up on that and I want to get right up on there and I'm gonna be using this portion of the blade this is what does the the chopping of the wood the chopping of the bone this is the skinning portion here and with that rounded tip you can go back and forth it's not just one motion but you can work your way through there. And that's the gristle in that right in there. That's the that's the toughest part of the beaver and that's usually what dulls your knife and you can see it went through that like nothing and I'm trying to work around the camera here so I don't get in the way I want you to see what a good job this cleaver is doing of removing a back strap on this small beaver that literally is about the width of my finger. I mean, look at that. This cleaver is trimming the silver skin as I go. So, what's the verdict on the Knives of Alaska Brown Bear Cleaver Combo? First of all, this is an outstanding cleaver. Quarter inch D2 steel, and you can see it hacked right through those hog legs. And believe me, there is nothing easy about working on a hog. You're going to work for every inch of that hog. And uh, when it comes to taking those legs off, great. Absolutely great. 
Now the thing about the design of this cleaver is that your rough work, your chopping, is done by the straight edge. That leaves the rounded skinning edge untouched and still sharp. So you can chop and skin with this. The little Cub Bear is just an outstanding caping knife. It is razor sharp, cuts like a laser, and with that very fine point, you've seen me use that over and over, you can really get in to find crevices and cracks and, and, and do what you need to do. And it's got just enough belly on it to be a good skinner. The stag handles are not slippery like I thought they would be. However, when you look at the recesses where the pins are, over time they're gonna fill up with crud and so you're going to have to keep those clean. That's, to me, that's one negative. I wish these pins were flush with the handle, but they're not. So, when do you need this type of kit? If you're bringing your animals back to uh, your, your skinning shed, where you have your saws, you have all your knives, and all of that stuff, this is probably not the best option for you, but that's not what this was designed for. This was designed to process big game in the field, and you can see I'm not in a skinning shed, I don't have bone saws, I don't have everything that I need, but between these two tools I can go through any size bone that I need and I can skin out anything no matter how tough it is. And that's exactly what this was designed to do, was to go into the back country or to go where you don't have proper facilities and process and break down the large game. Um, for that, it's ideal. So I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.